Ding, ding, ding. This week, we hit new inventory highs for 2024 in the single family market, while just five units shy of a year long high in the condo market as well. I know the stats are showing there was a decent amount of sales last week, but every agent that I talked to was commenting how slow it was. But experience tells me this is normal. It gets better and better each week after Labor Day as the market starts to pick up momentum. And that makes sense, right? The weather's still nice out, kids' activities are just starting to come into full drive. But here is the thing to keep your eye on, inventory. Will this inventory growth continue? If so, buyers get ready for some great opportunities. In this video, we're gonna go over the single family kind of markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also gonna do a quick interest rate update, and we're gonna talk about some relevant current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then know I'm here to help. Now, I recently had someone reach out in regards to our purchase power plan. They are specifically interested in condo in one of just two buildings, nothing else. This is the perfect plan, is they won't have to pay an agent two and a half to 3% on a million dollar purchase. I estimate that these guys could save upwards of 20 grand on their home purchase. With the purchase power plan, buyers pay for our services by the hour instead of a percentage of the purchase price. Reach out if you are a serious buyer that is looking to buy a house and wanna save a small fortune. And it's important to mention that we do it the old fashioned way as well. We can help you no matter which flavor of ice cream that you like. Let's jump into the single family market stats. And we're off to the races when it comes to inventory inventory levels in the state of Massachusetts shot up to 5,374 single family homes on the market. Now, we now have 5.8% more homes on the market than just 28 days ago. Inventory should continue to rise as we go through the fall market. Buyers, this is your heads up there there could be some great values for you to snap up. This was the week that we shot through the 2022 levels. We now have 1,107 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year, and we now have 112 more houses on the market when compared to 2022. This is now a four-year high for inventory levels. As expected, new listings shot up this week when compared to this time last year. We listed 1,410 single-family houses last week, which was 103 additional houses when compared to the same week in 2023. New listing activity increased by 7.9% this week. So the four-week rolling average is 838 units. Under agreements, they were up slightly when compared to last year's numbers. This week, we put 816 single-family houses under agreement. This is 29 units, so 3.7% more than the same week last year when we put 787 single-family houses under agreement. And that four-week rolling average for under agreements is 880 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 7.9%, while under agreements, they were up by 3.7%. It was a holiday weekend, so we knew that the panics and new listing ratio would shoot up. The ratio of 141.7 is compared to the 146% that we saw this week last year. What this means is that nearly 142% of all the properties that came on the market two weeks ago went under agreement last week. There were 606 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $799,000 and a median sales price of $650,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 40 units or 7.1% as there were 566 single family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $776,000. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in, zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market. With the closer you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now, this week's months of inventory increased to 1.63 months from last week's 1.5 months. And the 1.63 months this week is compared to the 1.38 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just want to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto the condo market. We now have 2,916 condos on the market as of Monday. This means that there is 6.5% more inventory in the market today than inventory levels of just 28 days ago. We now have 578 more units on the market today than today last year, 303 more than compared to the inventory levels of 2022, and 84 more units than compared to 2021. There were 797 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 334 units. Now, the 797 units listed was 128 units or 19.1% more than the 669 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. You couldn't see the blue line there because in 2022, we listed 801 units. It's similar year data. 
This week, we put 352 units under agreement, 352 condo sales was 36 units, or 11.4% more than 316 units that we put under agreement this week last year. That four week rolling average for under agreements is 330 units. So 19.1% more listings came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 11.4% more condos. And that condo pendings new listing ratio shot up as well to 174.3%. This is compared to the 171.7% we saw this week last year. There were 258 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $711,000 and the median sales price of $571,000 the same week last year. There are 253 condos that sold for an average sales price of $683,000. So sales levels were up by 2%. Months of inventory shot up to 2.17 months this week compared to the 1.89 months that we recorded last week. We recorded 1.75 months of inventory levels this week last year. Any chance you can do me a huge favor, you hit that like button right down there, believe it or not, just makes a huge difference with that YouTube algorithm and helps plays with the channel. While subscribing, if you haven't done that and you're enjoying the content, then I appreciate you considering subscribing. As hell, it doesn't hurt either, but time to talk about interest rates. That was a great week for interest rates. Really, it's been a great month for interest rates. They were down 18 basis points this week and now a full 1% when compared to this time last year. And look at that downward interest rate trend. Get prepared for the Fed rate cut coming this month. The question everyone's trying to figure out is if it's going to be a quarter of a point or a half a point. But check out this article. It relates to housing. I promise how government debt is killing the US dollar. Why does this matter to housing? Because a weak dollar means inflation. Inflation means that prices for darn near everything will go up in the long term, including housing. So the United States federal debt is soared at 35.3 trillion, which is an increase of 1.9 trillion in less than a year. What is incredible is that this has occurred during years of record tax revenues and economic growth. And by the way, this is an attack on one side or the other. Both sides are wanting to spend like a drunken sailor. It seems that cutting spending isn't sexy enough to get votes from the electorate. It should be though, because if we adjusted for government debt accumulation 2021 to 2024, were the worst years of government adjusted for debt since the 30s. And this all happened in a growth period. It's true, governments can't technically go bankrupt. This is because the government can service its debt due to unlimited taxing authority and their ability to issue more treasury securities. The issue is that the government has economic, fiscal, and inflationary limits. Economic restraints because constantly increasing taxation leads to stagnation and more debt. As more debt is issued, then this leads to the loss of confidence in the currency and an erosion of its purchasing power, which leads to, Trump roll please, higher prices, and higher prices include real estate. So what am I trying to say? Well, neither candidate is talking about balancing the budget, which means we will have more borrowing. And we already talked about what happens with more borrowing. Eventually, we're gonna hit a pinnacle, but no one knows when and where that's going to be. In the meantime, the currency will continue to erode in value and prices will continue to go up. In other words, if you're betting that housing prices are going to go down, then you're making a bad bet as you are betting against 35 trillion and growing reasons why property prices will continue to go up in the long term. Buy real estate, buy as much as you humanly can because this is the best hedge against what is coming. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.